England, too good for Australia in the Rugby World Cup. 40 points to 16 winners. That is a bit of a hiding in the end. An interesting one because it was close uh, at times, and the Aussies, they scored when they needed to score, except when they couldn't in the second half, and England were really just able to control the game. Uh, they're going to be a huge threat going forward to whoever they get uh, in that semi-final, the Wallabies will be disappointed not to have made things a bit closer in the end, but they are going home. In all likelihood, that's the end of a few guys' Wallabies careers, and Michael Checker, uh, his time with the Wallabies is also most likely done from, from everything that was talked about before the tournament. So, um, yeah, congratulations to England. Top, top effort, and uh, commism commiserations to the Wallabies. Um, I thought on their day, the Wallabies could potentially um, you know, step things up. You saw them do it against the All Blacks once this year where they gave them a bit of a hiding themselves, but um, ultimately not enough. Uh, I'll go through some of the key points, some of the key stats, and then um, you guys can let me know your thoughts at the end. Uh, it started with Australia going 15 phases early and then knocking it on, and the English defence held. And that was kind of a story of this game, how the Wallabies would have the ball, they weren't able to unlock the English defense and when the English got chances boy did they take them um, there was a free kick each way with the scrums early on the scrums were messy throughout this game there's a lot of time spent doing scrum resets it has to be said so that was one aspect of the game that was a wee bit lacking uh, eventually the Wallabies took the lead uh, Lelia Fano kicked the penalty uh, all came from a Kirtley Beal line break and it was 3-0 to the Wallabies so some points for all the early pressure they had on that was after 11 minutes, so um, yeah, they probably would have liked to have been up by maybe seven with all the pressure they've been putting on, but uh, England's defense had rightly held, so limiting to three points kind of uh, also made sense. Not long later, uh, the Aussie defense held itself. England were putting all kinds of pressure on, and uh, Pocock managed to win a key turnover. It looked like a key moment where England had been under all that pressure, conceded points, and then Australia had done the same and then managed to, to escape. But it wasn't to be because on 18 minutes, which is essentially Aussie kicking it away and England getting the ball back and running it back to them, they managed to score a try through Johnny May. Uh, he won't score many easier ones than that. They had, uh, they had the numbers. Um, Curry drew his man and passed the ball, so um, top stuff. Very, uh, very slick move from, from England. Like, May's work was, was made easy by, by the team itself. Uh, and it was a great conversion from Farrell, who had a fantastic night with the boot. 7-3 uh, to England. He got another one about two minutes later. He had to work a bit harder for this one to Johnny May. Uh, Slade, intercepted, Slade intercepted an uh, Aussie pass. He put a little kick through. And, um, yeah, May was on the receiving end of it. He was able to, to pinch it and um, over in the, pretty much the same spot on the left corner. Another great kick from Farrell, and it's 14 through. And all of a sudden, the Wallabies, who've been putting on a bit of pressure, had a bit of position and territory, have given England a couple of chances, and England have snapped them up. So, uh, clinical stuff. Lydia Fano did kick a penalty on 25 minutes, but Farrell kicked one back uh, a few minutes later. So, it went from 14-6 to 17-6. Uh, it got a bit scrappy. There were a few turnovers, some penalties. There was kind of a half tip tackle on Billy V, which Ben Skeen didn't refer, which is surprising because that guy's uh, kind of known for referring each and every little thing. Um, 39 minutes. Um, there is a penalty at the scrum uh, to Sinclair, and Aussie kick the penalty, so it goes 17-9. There's a restart for halftime, but Aussie get it and kick it out. So 17-9 is where it goes in at half time. So Aussie behind, but not dead and buried. England looking good for the chances they've taken, and defensively looking pretty sound. Uh, run meters were 162 to 248, with Aussie having the better of it. Position 60% Aussie, 52% uh, territory. Tackling was 89% for England, and this is a story that kind of continued throughout the game. Their defense was immense. 85% uh, for Australia, but they had to make about half as many tackles, and penalties conceded was 5 to England, 1 to Australia. So looking at the stats, you would say Australia should have been in front, but the stats don't do what England were doing justice, and uh, probably doesn't highlight the struggle, I guess, that um, Australia was having and just really unlocking the English defence. Second half, 
Um, it starts well for Australia. You probably think they need to score next to get back into the game. And on, on 43 minutes, Cora Beatty, and that guy looks sharp. They get the ball out wide. Patea, I think he had Hooper outside him. Mean, he doesn't go with Hooper. He goes inside to Cora Beatty, which seems like the wrong move but because there's still one guy to beat. But Cora Beatty just absolutely puts the hammer down, pure gas, and he manages to get a try. Uh, and it's converted, so it's 17 points to 16. That's on 43 minutes. One point in the game, totally game on. But that's the last of the scoring for the Wallabies, and that really was costly. Uh, it doesn't take long for England to hit back. Farrell has a pinpoint pass uh, to Sinclair. Um, he doesn't have that many meters to go, but it's probably a fair few for a prop. Uh, but he's in he's in open space, a huge gap, and uh, it's an amazing try. So um, that puts England kind of back out of touch as, as the Aussies have just brought them back. Uh, 51 minutes, England have a massive scrum. And the scrums have been kind of even up until that point, but England really get on top of them. It's 27 points to 16. Um, on the hour mark, Nasirani and Karibi did go close for Australia. They were about a meter out each. But again, uh, the, the English defense was just able to hold and they managed to win a turnover. And that's probably the last of the game where you really remember Australia threatening apart from a disallowed try. But uh, 63 minutes, England get a try themselves, disallowed for being dropped over the line. That was Young's. Uh, Farrell kicks a penalty on 65 minutes to make it 30 points to 16. So the Aussies are two scores are out. Uh, and then 70, 72 minutes to kick another penalty. A uh, big penalty from Farrell. And that looks like the Aussies are dead and buried at that point because it's 33-16. And then just to put that final nail in the coffin, uh, Watson gets an intercept try. The Wallabies are desperate. They have to throw the ball around. They're in their own like 22, and uh, yeah, Watson, perfect read, intercepts the ball, converted 40 points to, to 16. So um, yeah, top, top stuff from England. Their scrum really got into the game. Maybe it was a bit of the the additional rest meant that they weren't as sharp in the first half. I'm not sure. But over the course of the game, England certainly got better, and Australia kind of stayed at that same level. So... I mean, Australia weren't bad. They just didn't have enough to kind of throw that knockout punch to England in this one. And England were just able to hit them too many times. So final stats, run meters 273 to 568. So Australia with a fair few more. Position was 64%. Um, Australia, 62% territory. Interestingly, Spark Sport, who I'm watching on New Zealand, gave different stats. But these are ESPN's ones. And they're similar to Rugby Pass's ones. So I'm not sure who's got it wrong. But either way. Uh, tackling percentage for England, 88%. Remember, it was 89 in the first half, so they didn't drop much, 1%. Um, their defense was just too much, 160 out of 181. Wallabies was okay, 85%, 66 out of 78. But when the English cut through, they really cut through and just uh, opened them up. So turnovers conceded was probably a big issue for Australia. 18 turnover, turnovers conceded compared to England's eight. But... Um, yeah, in terms of uh, individuals, Watson had 61 run meters, five defenders beaten, two clean breaks, and a try. Impressive stuff from him. But if you look, want run meters, it's Korobiti with 134. Six defenders beaten and two clean breaks. But look at the scoreboard, man. You look at some of these English guys. Underhill, 20 out of 22 tackles. 20 tackles. Curry, 16 out of 17. George, 17 out of 17. Michael Bunipola, 18 out of 18. That, I think, is the story of the game. I think uh, Curry got man of the match, which was awesome. Could have gone to any number of the English guys uh, for their defensive work, for the work at the breakdown. But um, 40 points to 16. Nobody's going to want to play England. But um, one of the two teams playing very soon uh, is going to have to do it. It's going to be a hell of a game, whoever plays them. But um, yeah, you guys let me know your thoughts on this one. Kind of a game of two halves, but over the course of the 80, England just too good. Um, you guys let me know your thoughts on the game. And... Um, yeah, I'll look forward to the next one and talk to you again soon. See you later. England are through to the semis. So if you're an England fan, it might be about time you got yourself an England jersey. England Rugby Store. Free UK delivery on orders over £60. Pounds. Um, pretty much all the jerseys are £60 pounds or above. So that should work. Uh, if you are looking for an additional discount though, the code is 2 cents 10 for an additional 10% off uh, England Rugby Gear. Check the link in the description and um, 
On to the semis, guys.